Thank you for joining us today for the March Town Hall. This is our afternoon session. We'll be getting started in another couple minutes. So thank you for jumping on in. We're waiting for more of our attendees to join us. Again, for those of you that are just joining us, thank you for attending the afternoon session of our spring semester town hall. We'll be starting shortly. We're just waiting for more. The attendees are just streaming on in. So thank you for your patience while we get started. Thank you. If you're just joining us, you are in the afternoon session of the March Town Hall and folks are still coming in, um, but I'll go ahead and just get started with a couple meeting announcements. First off, my name is Gay Bugenhagen. I'm the change management lead on the l program. And today my team and I are gonna be assisting uh, Jack Blanchard with this presentation. My team will be working in the background, um, helping with questions, um, so feel free to use that. So, so the basic meeting announcement first, I wanna point out that we have the live transcript running. You are welcome to opt in or out if that's something that you would like to see. It's in your Zoom settings down at the bottom to show or hide. The second point I wanna make is we are recording this session and it will be put or posted on our Elevate uh, website once it's been remediated and all the accessibility has been taken care of. And the last point is we have enabled the Q&A feature, so we encourage you to submit your questions throughout the presentation. We have time at the end to take questions, but we encourage you to, as Jack goes through the slides, post your question in there as you're having that thought of any content. My team will be working in the background to triage those questions for us so they're available at the end of the session. And with that, I would like to turn it over to Jack Blanchard for the presentation. Thank you. Okay. And good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Jack Blanchard, Associate Provost for Enterprise Resource Planning, uh, working with the team uh, for Elevate. I'm also a faculty member here at the University of Maryland College Park uh, since 1999. Uh, I'm a professor in the Department of Psychology and served in a variety of different positions, including department chair uh, in psychology. I continue to do research and teach, uh, so I'm wearing several hats, and this is just my uh, ERP hat I'm wearing today. <clears throat> so our agenda uh, for today's discussion is to, one, uh, provide a brief recap um, describing what Elevate is, so we're all uh, on the same page. I'll then talk about um, where we are. I'll look a little bit in the rearview mirror. I'll talk about where we are currently uh, in terms of our roadmap. And then I'll look forward about what's happening next, what's on the horizon. And then we'll wrap up uh, for a question and answer session. I have this timed out that my part of the presentation will end before 30 minutes after the hour. We'll then kick off the Q&A and we'll be done within 15 to 20 minutes of that. So you'll have plenty of time uh, before the hour start, next hour starts to get to your next meeting or class. <clears throat> before we begin, I wanna start a introductory uh, video by Provost King Rice. Hello, I'm Jennifer King Rice, Senior Vice President and Provost at the University of Maryland. Recently, the University of Maryland rolled out a new strategic plan, Fearlessly Forward. Our plan is guided by principles such as innovation, collaboration, 
inclusive excellence, and impact for the public good. We are carving out a better future for our state, our nation, and the world by thinking creatively and working together for a common purpose. The Elevate program plays a key part in moving our flagship institution fearlessly forward by transforming the tools we utilize to support the success and well being of our faculty, staff, and students. Elevate will deliver Workday, a modern core administrative system. This streamlined solution includes innovations in how we develop and recognize our staff for their talent and contributions, how we utilize data to improve diversity and inclusion and equity, how we support our staff and faculty in their day-to-day -day operations. On behalf of myself and my co-sponsors of the Elevate program, I want to acknowledge the unprecedented level of collaboration from hundreds of staff members across our campus who have dedicated over 4,000 hours toward ensuring that our new administrative solution meets our diverse needs. Thank you all so much for your valuable time and contributions to the Elevate program. Between now and Workday's launch in July of 2023, we invite all faculty, staff, and students at the University of Maryland College Park, the University of Maryland Eastern Shore, the University of Maryland Center for Environmental Science, and the University System of Maryland office to become engaged with Elevate by visiting elevate.umd.edu, attending Elevate's upcoming events, and subscribing to Elevate's newsletter, The Elevator. We appreciate you taking this step to engage with Elevate by making the effort to attend this town hall session. Thank you. So what I want to begin with is a recap of basically what is Elevate. And before we get started, I want to provide a definition. If you look at the right hand uh, part of the slide, uh, enterprise resource planning or ERP system, what does that refer to? It's basically our computer systems that support all the work that we do on campus. Whether you're logging into Quali for financial purposes, or you're logging into PHR to complete a timesheet, or using ETERP if you're involved in uh, recruitment and hiring, or if you're a student who's trying to register for courses or download your transcript, all of these computer systems work together to support what each of us does day to day here at the university. The problem that we're having is that these systems are woefully out of date and obsolete and they can no longer meet the complex needs of a flagship research university. So we are making the change and elevating our ERP to the cloud with Workday. Workday is an integrated ERP platform uh, that's on the cloud. Uh, so you log into it uh, using uh, the web. And this is a system that's been used extensively by higher education. Over 30 R1 institutions like ours um, are using Workday and more are currently implementing Workday. Workday has a number of advantages um, because it is software as a service. It is continually updated uh, and refined and improved. And you can access it through mobile sources uh, like your smartphone, uh, your uh, laptop, notebook, uh, desktop computer, tablet. It makes it a lot easier um, for us to do the work that we're doing day to day uh, whether you're student, staff, or faculty. So as um, the provost noted, uh, we are not doing this alone. It is a partnership, uh, both College Park, Eastern Shore, Center for Environmental Science, and the system office all use our existing HR and finance systems, Kuali, PHR, et cetera. All of us will be migrating over uh, to Workday um, as a common shared solution. So we are doing this as a team. We are also supported in that transformation by our implementation partner, Huron Consulting. Huron is a firm that's done uh, implementations at other higher ed institutions like Iowa State University, uh, a school very much like Maryland, uh, a state school that is also had been using Quali, just like we do. We also have an independent verification and validation partner uh, that's a mouthful, but basically it's a quality assurance partner, North Highland, and that's a third party that helps keep an eye on what we're doing and identifies any concerns or risks and helps us identify strategies to mitigate those risks. So they're there to make sure that we are going to be successful uh, in implementing Workday. And finally, we have Workday as a partner. 
Uh, that's the platform, but they also provide extensive um, support and expert experience for us uh, to be successful. So what I'd like to do is summarize where we are, and then I'll follow that up about where we're going. And so I'm gonna lay out a couple um, calendar and timelines for you to orient you. So this shows you at a high level, this multi-year project that involves three work streams. At the top in red, you have the finance and human capital management, that's HR. Uh, that work stream is what we're working on now. Uh, and that will go live in July of 2023. And in the next slide, I'm gonna break that out and I'm gonna show you month by month where we've been and where we're going. So I'm gonna come back to that work stream. So keep that in mind. Going down, you see adaptive planning. This is a budgeting tool. Many of you will not have anything to do with this, but for others, it's a critical tool uh, that we use every year um, for the university. And that adaptive planning implementation will take six months. It will start when we go live with HCM and finance and then conclude as you see there, January of 2024. Now, the last bit that you see at the bottom, the student implementation, um, that is a multi-year effort with a go live date of fall of 2026. I want to note that the student implementation is delayed, not because we're pushing it off because we want to uh, by choice, but that's a technical requirement. We have to build in finance and HCM before we can then put the student on top of that. So that's why student is delayed um, just because of a technical requirement. As I'll talk about later, we are pulling forward some early work on student because student is so critical to us. We wanna make sure that that goes well. And so we're gonna make some early investments this year actually to start some um, early preparatory work for student. So I'm gonna take that red work stream, uh, finance and HCM, and I'm gonna break it out in this slide that you see here. So here we are, um, this is the 30 month implementation for HCM and finance, that blue work stream followed by adaptive planning. If you look to the left, <clears throat> last year, starting in January, we began with planning. Uh, we hired staff, we were getting ourselves organized. We brought over 40 in, largely internal staff members full time on to Elevate to really devote their focus and bring on board their subject matter expertise and their understanding of our institutions to make the Elevate program successful. We then transitioned last summer into what's called the architect phase. Uh, an architect is a good description because just like building a new building, uh, you want to first design that building. And so in architect, we're doing the same thing for Workday. We are doing future state process designs. So we're not taking the old processes that we used in Quali and dumping them onto a new technology platform. Instead, we're redesigning our processes to fully leverage Workday so that it is user-friendly, efficient, easy to use. And so we spent the summer, we brought in advisory group members. These were staff from across our institution, over 90 of them, to help us with those future state process designs, designing on paper what these processes will be, what they will look like in Workday, for example, from recruitment to hiring. We then took those designs, and that's what takes us to where we are now, configure and prototype. We took those designs on paper and put them in a workday tenant, it's called. So basically now we can see how do those designs look, work, and function within Workday. You can log into Workday and go through those functions. And during this phase, we critically started working with a broader group of staff uh, and we created what I'll talk about in the next slide, project implementation teams to draw in hundreds of staff uh, to help us validate those initial designs and make subsequent decisions. And I'll break that out a little bit more for you. As we look forward on the calendar this summer, we'll move into testing the designs that we've developed and we will be developing materials for training. And I have um, several slides later, I'll talk more about the specifics of training and what's upcoming for that. And then ultimately we'll go live July of 2023 and start with adaptive planning. So let me pivot now to talking more about how we brought staff in to validate the designs that we had on, for Workday within Configure and Prototype. 
And here we adopted a strategy um, having project implementation teams, pit crews. Um, and these pit crews were intended to ensure that we had representation from each of our institutions across all of our colleges, divisions, major units. We wanted to be sure that all of these local constituencies were able to bring their needs forward to Elevate, look at the new designs that we have, and then provide feedback to us. So we had 34 pit crews, but we had over 350 pit crew members. And then as you'll see in a later slide, we had over 400 uh, individual participants who actually came into um, these customer confirmation sessions to look at our designs and work day and let us know what they thought. Now, when they came into those customer confirmation sessions, we were asking for information. And I'm gonna tell you more about what uh, these pit crews provided for us. First, I wanna point out some important numbers. Uh, in the middle of the screen, you see 468 staff members were involved in these customer confirmation sessions. As Provost uh, King Rice noted, this is unprecedented to have this extensive input um, from such um, a large uh, group of staff members across all of our institutions. They devoted over 4,600 hours of staff time. And when they came in, we were not simply asking them to passively look at something. We were asking them to be actively engaged and to let us know, do they have questions? Do they have concerns? Um, we also sent out surveys to each of those pit crew leaders and asked them, are there particular issues that you have that your team has identified that we should know about? And in that, we were asking them about whether they saw any kind of blocker uh, in what they were seeing, a concern or an issue. And another important word, uh, I'm sorry, a blocker is an important issue that prevents someone from doing their job. Um, that if you design it this way, I'm not gonna be able to do what I need to do for my job. That's a blocker. We also asked them about gaps. Are there concerns, issues, tweaks that we need to make? And I'll show you how we broke this out. So those 2,100 items were detailed pieces of feedback that the Elevate team then had a disposition and we had to figure out how to answer questions. We had to figure out designs. So those were actionable items for us. And I'm gonna show you um, how we did that. Uh, so 2,100 items come in. <clears throat> the red boxes, I'm not going to go into too much detail. Some of these were comments about system benefits. Um, 438 responses were, hey, this meets our needs. Um, what you've laid out here, this is going to work for us. We don't need to talk anymore. There were over 1,300 responses that included things like questions. Can you tell me more about how this is going to work in Workday? I have a question about how this would um, play out in my particular scenario. Those were responded to. And then the green and yellow boxes is what I want to focus on. The green represents gaps that were resolved. So this is something that someone identified as a problem or concern for us. And then the team looked to resolve those gaps. And we have here 81 instances where a fix was made, a change was made in response to feedback. So one example is that when we do hiring, uh, we do background checks. And it was pointed out to us that PG County law is that you can't do a background check until you've made the job offer. So we made sure that that sequence of events uh, was aligned properly within the design that we did. So we changed that. And there were a number of other ones. My point here is that we're capturing input and that actually influenced the design um, of the system and the configuration of Workday. There are in the yellow, you see 130 open gaps. The team is actively working on these and resolving them. And that is going to be done shortly. So again, unprecedented input and represents two of the pillars of the Elevate program, transparency and collaboration. And again, many thanks to the staff who spent so much time giving us input to make sure that we're gonna get this right. So that's where we are and what we've been recently doing. Now I'm going to start looking a bit over the horizon in terms of what comes next. So I've been talking about how we've been engaging staff across our institutions and expanding out. So we started with our core team, 
uh, hiring full-time Elevate team members of over 40 of them now. We expanded that in those future state process designs last summer uh, with our advisory group members. We then went into our customer confirmation sessions with 366 staff on pit crews and then others, taking us over 400. So very extensive, but <clears throat> we also wanna expand this to include faculty. Um, and people will say, well, faculty don't do what staff do on these systems. Absolutely right. And that's the entire point. There's some faculty who just log in to approve their timesheets or to change some kind of personal information uh, within the system. There are other faculty who are in administrative roles and they need to pull a financial report um, or there are principal investigators on a grant and they're doing procurement or they're hiring uh, within their grant uh, or they wanna see a financial report. So there are diverse needs within faculty. We have tenure track, we have PTK faculty and a whole host of roles across our institutions. So we've created a faculty advisory committee. And this committee is intended to ensure that we consider the unique needs of faculty users of HR and finance systems. And we want the advisory committee to help us understand how best to adapt any training and related support resources to meet faculty needs. And we also want this group to help us build awareness um, about Elevate within faculty, to keep faculty informed and to better prepare faculty for upcoming changes in our ERP system. So lots of engagement and commitment um, from staff. We wanna be sure that we're doing now um, appropriate engagement with faculty. Really happy we had a larger group than we expected. We had 21 faculty who have volunteered uh, to serve on this advisory committee from across our institutions. Uh, we really did an extensive uh, effort to recruit people. And I wanna thank everyone who volunteered to participate. This is gonna be incredibly useful for us and helpful for other faculty to make sure that we're preparing the campus properly. So beyond staff and faculty, what else can we be doing to prepare the campus? And one thing that we started last month, and it will continue on a monthly basis, are functional overviews. Um, we have what, up, one upcoming at the end of this month, uh, March 31st. These are brief workday demonstrations. Um, each functional overview will cover a specific topic in workday. So the end of this month, we're doing do it yourself uh, in workday, how you can go in as an employee and change your name, change some identifying information, um, language preferences, and we'll show people how to do that. In February, to the right, you see the topic we covered uh, in our February um, functional overview. We gave an introduction to how to navigate around Workday. The goal of these monthly presentations is to orient and familiarize users with Workday. These, by the way, are not training sessions. I'll talk more about training. Training is more intensive and it will happen later on. We'll have new materials for that. This is just to help people understand what's coming and that will allow the transition to go more smoothly. By the way, if you haven't been able to attend a functional overview that's happened in the past, like in February, or there's an upcoming date that doesn't work for you, there's no problem. We video all of those presentations and they are archived and accessible um, through our website. Um, so feel free to go and view them through there. So I talked about training, that functional overviews are not training. So what about training? We all know how critical this is. And we can all point to examples that we've experienced, whether it's here or, or other places, where training seems to maybe not be fully adequate. Uh, it doesn't prepare us and it doesn't stick around um, more than what we need it. So I'm going to walk you through this calendar of events moving from left to right uh, to describe how we approach training and then when training will actually begin for users. So <clears throat> that far left box is where we are now. Training needs analysis. So before we can ever begin, we need to understand what are the needs what are all the different users that will be coming into these um, uh, into Workday? What are the different roles that they will have? And that will allow us to articulate what the needs are for training. What do we need to do? 
And then that next box in the bottom, training design. So now we know who we're targeting and where our needs are. We develop course outlines and a training curriculum. As a faculty member, um, I certainly appreciate this, that when you're developing a new course, you need to put together that curriculum. What are your lectures? What content you want to cover? And we'll be spending April through the part of the summer doing exactly that. Once we know what the curriculum is, we then move to that training content development. Uh, so that will take us from July through the end of the year. And this is a heavy lift because now every video, every job aid, every online resource, um, every instructor-led material that we're going to be using uh, for workshops, uh, user labs, et cetera, we have to develop all that. And we have to make sure that it is specific to all of our local needs. So a heavy lift, that's going to be occupying the team, developing all of that material. Once we have all of that ready, the first thing that we want to do is pilot that training. Again, as a faculty member, any of you who have taught, you know, the first time you offer a course, you learn from that and you tweak it and improve it. We want to do some piloting of our training so we can get feedback from early users, refine that training and make it better. And then a year from now, this is very quick, March of 2023, we will open registration to people for training. And that will go on for 12 weeks, three full months. People can sign up for training and we'll deliver that through Go Live and beyond into August of 2023. And by the way, after that, we'll continue to provide online training resources. We'll have training makeup sessions. We'll have user labs. People can come in and get help to do things. We'll have a service desk. So we'll have a period of what we're calling hyper care where we'll continue to support people in this transition as the systems get stabilized and people get accustomed uh, to using Workday. So that's what to anticipate with training. Now, back to students. I told you at the outset that HCM and finance are the priority right now because they are the required foundation for us to get to student. And that's why student typically starts after you go live with HCM and finance. Saying that, we all know that the student system is critically important for us. It's important for our tens of thousands of students. Uh, it's important for our faculty. Uh, it's important for the institution. We know our current systems are woefully inadequate. And so we're pulling forward some early work on the student implementation to ensure that we get this right and ensure that we build something that's going to be a vast improvement over what we have now. So we're developing a position now that will be a lead for student implementation. And we intend to post that and hopefully hire someone later this spring over the summer that will start leading this early work. <clears throat> and this, what we're calling student transformation and readiness is getting us ready for that student implementation. So there are some research and understanding that we need to reach about our current needs, our current systems, what's wrong with them, what are the problems, what do students want, what do students require. This will be a very student-centered process to engage our students to learn about their needs so that we develop something that's going to work ideally for them. This will all take us through to that go live of 2026 I touched on previously. The other thing that we're doing that relates to the student implementation is that we are developing a student internship within the Elevate program. This is in collaboration uh, with Huron Consulting. It will be a summer program this upcoming summer, 10 weeks, and student interns will come in and they'll help us with a few things on Elevate, but one thing they will help us with is preparation for student implementation. So they're gonna bring on board very unique perspective as a student to start helping us with that groundwork for student implementation. Also a great training opportunity for students who want to learn about um, these kinds of implementation projects and learn about consulting. We'll have more details as we develop this and we'll announce that later this spring so that interested students can apply. So as I wrap up my piece, I just want to remind you that there are a number of ways to stay connected with us and to stay informed. Continue to attend these when we have town hall meetings. 
attend or watch the videos from the functional overviews, our website is continually updated. Those videos that I talked about uh, will be housed um, on our website. We have a newsletter that's now published monthly. By the way, you can subscribe to that so it comes to you directly. I'd encourage you to do that. Um, and you can also access the Elevator newsletter through the website. Finally, we have a portal in our website where you can submit questions uh, and we'll answer them. <laughs> we curate this, we don't just ignore it. Um, and there's an extensive list of frequently asked questions on the website and that list grows because we're capturing information that people ask us and then we share that in that FAQ list. So that's another place to go. So I'm going to turn it back over to Gay as we enter our Q&A phase, which is right on time. I promised we'd get there uh, before 30 minutes after the hour. Gay, we have questions? <laughs> Yep, we do. Thank you. Um, thank you for everybody that's been submitting your questions while we're in this session. We also got questions from folks as they registered for this town hall. And so Jack, what we've, what my team has been working in the background is we've taken all these questions and we're trying to group them into some broad categories. Um, the first broad category is going to be general project items. Second category is more workday specific, maybe down into the weeds. And then the third is training. Um, so with that, let me start with some of the general project questions that have come in. First one, uh, what do you see as risks or challenges that the program needs to address? That could be a long list of uh, risks and challenges. Um, you know, there are a number of challenges that a project of this scope faces. Um, we're changing business practices and the underlying technology that impacts four institutions um, with over 15,000 full-time and part-time employees and over 44,000 students. <laughs> so there's a lot going on there. Um, I think the team is doing a great job, uh, but there are a few things that come to mind to answer your question. Um, one is that implementing these changes um, can involve burdens on staff. And we know that our staff are already challenged, uh, challenged with COVID-related activities on top of their day jobs. Um, I mentioned to you in the provost called out our wonderful staff who've contributed over 4,000 hours, staff outside of the Elevate program. So that can create a burden and that's a challenge. The benefit though, that makes that burden pay off is that <clears throat> as I described before, that transparency and collaboration ensures um, that we are developing something that's gonna work um, for everyone uh, at our different institutions. Um, and so that is how we mitigate that risk of you know, dealing with so many staff and the different perspectives that they have. The other challenge that comes to mind is the fact that Elevate is not the one project going on at our different institutions. There are all kinds of other technology projects, non-technology projects that are consuming our staff, their time, uh, the resources um, of our universities. And one of the things that we're doing to mitigate this risk of all of these different programs, maybe not aware of one another, is we have constant meetings with leadership. We are sharing out information. We're engaging these other projects to make sure that we're coordinating our efforts uh, and, and we're looking at timing and schedule. Uh, and so that's a, a delicate dance that we do to coordinate all these other projects that are going on across our institutions. Um, another critical issue that um, we, we've just repeatedly been advised about from other universities who've gone through this is keeping all of our diverse communities informed. We have four institutions, we have all these different colleges, divisions, et cetera, keeping students, staff and faculty aware of what's happening so that no one is surprised and no one feels left out. Um, and so again, you know, our functional overviews, town hall meetings, emails, website, all of that is intended to keep people informed to mitigate that risk that people will be out of touch with such a major event. So those are some of the things that come to mind and some of the strategies that we have to address them. Thank you. 
Next question that's come in, will some departments or colleges go live before others? The answer to that is no. Um, it, it's, it's a reasonable question because in the past, there have been some projects that have come in in a phased approach and some colleges or you know, divisions will start first. That's not gonna be the case. July 1, 2023, we all go live, a big bang it's called, uh, using Workday for HCM and finance. Our Kuali system, our PHR system, um, that goes into read-only mode and we're not using it um, for business anymore. Uh, so we'll, we'll all be part of this uh, and jump in it together at the same time. Next question, does Workday have language modifications for ESOL users, English as a second language? Yeah, yeah. One of the neat things about Workday is that it has over 30 language preferences um, where the user can go in and check their preferred language. Uh, and all of the um, native text within Workday will then translate uh, to that language for the user whenever they log in. Uh, this functionality, by the way, is going to be demonstrated in that upcoming functional overview uh, that I mentioned that's scheduled for uh, March 31st. Um, that do-it-yourself in Workday um, uh, functional overview will describe selecting that language preference. Next up, uh, what are the plans or status of collecting new demographic data? Right. Um, yeah, that's a good question because anyone who knows our current systems know that they don't do a good job of allowing us to self-identify in a variety of different ways. Uh, Workday, unlike these legacy systems, will allow for more extensive self-identification with regard to gender details, sexual orientation, and race. So we're currently engaged um, with stakeholders, uh, such as the Office of Diversity and Inclusion, uh, UHR, and the Office of uh, Institutional Research Planning and Assessment, ERPA. And we're getting their leadership and guidance, and we'll be um, developing those values about what information will be used moving forward. One last question in this category. After Workday goes live, who will be the contact for Workday for those that need technical support? Right, um, you may have recalled in that training slide on the far right, uh, we, we mentioned support. We are already developing a post-go live support organization. So this will be a dedicated team of individuals who will, will support HR, um, and finance within Workday. Uh, and that will be something that continues to exist um, in perpetuity. Uh, so there will be a support organization that people can reach out to uh, when they have technical issues with Workday. I have a couple questions here that I've grouped together and they're, they're Workday specific. So if it's okay with you, Jack, let me try to take some of these as my first cut and jump Please. in if you have something to add. Uh, We've gotten a lot of questions and it's about security and some folks on this call, they use the Workday um, instance with their state benefits, so for their health insurance. And so we get questions about, well, how is this gonna work? Am I gonna have a W number? Or I log in today with my duo, um, with my CAS and my duo, and how's it all gonna happen in Workday? And so I just kind of wanna summarize rather than read out all six or seven questions here. Basically, you will log into Workday with your directory ID and password, just similar to what you do today. So if today you use the Duo Push and it's on your cell phone, or you use the little toggle or codes, um, you, it will be the same for you. I personally, I use my cell phone and I use the Duo Mobile Push, um, but the login for this will be, you can remember it because it's your directory ID that we use for a lot of different things. Um, the next question that I have here that's come in is uh, near and dear to me. Uh, will there be customized reporting options made available? And I'm happy to say that, yes, there's going to be a bunch of different reporting options available to you. You can uh, filter your data. So if you're trying to pull a report and you want to like drill down on specific items, you can filter. Once you get a report set up that you like, you'll be able to save some of those report configurations so you can continue to use those you know, month over month, which I know would help when you're trying to prepare stuff for faculty. 
And then lastly, there's going to be some Excel pivot table drill down kinds of functionality that's built in, which I think is going to be pretty cool. And lastly, we will have some specially trained users that will be available for some of that ad hoc reporting that we, of course, know we tend to get the ad hoc requests. Um, next question, will Workday replace BA4? And uh, the short answer is no, it's not replacing BA4. Um, the last question I have here in Workday specific is, uh, can you assign tasks to your coworkers through Workday? And I believe this question is getting at delegations. And the answer is yes, Workday has the ability to do delegations. And what delegations are is it allows you to give somebody else the opportunity to either initiate tasks on your behalf, or they might even be able to complete some of the tasks that you have in your inbox, um, which is good. And there's, we're currently drafting the delegation policy. I'm part of a group that's working on it. And there's kind of three areas that we're looking at with the policy. The first one is, are we gonna open up all of our business processes to delegation or do we wanna have um, some yes, some no? And so we're, we're drafting that into the policy. We're also taking a look at the security roles. Will all security roles be able to delegate or will there be you know, yes for this security role and no for that? And then the last thing that we're looking at in that policy is the duration of the delegations. Um, sometimes we tend to delegate something and then maybe forget about it and it goes on in perpetuity and the person can move on and they still have a delegated. Um, so the policy would be looking at having a annual delegation with a audit review or something to make sure that the person who's been delegated still needs it and then, you know, renew it. Um, so that's about what we have going on for delegations. Um, the next questions are going to be around training that I have here. So if you don't mind, we'll go to, will end user training be required? Yeah, we'll, we'll have training. <laughs> I laid that out in the training slide. Uh, we will have end user training before we go live on um, July, 2023. We're working with the Elevate team to determine the kind of training needed for the different users based on their roles in the system. Uh, we want to make sure that people take the necessary training, no more, no less um, than what they need to understand Workday uh, and perform their roles in Workday when applicable. Next question, will there be a sandbox for the finance and HR modules? Yes, yeah, so a sandbox allows you to go in and kind of play with the system before we go live. And yes, we will offer user labs when we get closer to go live, where people will go into that and be able to work with something that's going to look very similar uh, to what they'll be working with post go live. Next question, um, will training provide written step-by-step -step instructions to reference later, or will employees have to rely on what they heard in training? Oh my gosh, I would never expect someone to simply <laughs> rely on what they heard in training. Uh, if I had that burden, I'd forget everything. Uh, and we, we won't simply be using um, old fashioned pieces of paper that we give to people as they walk out the door. Uh, we are developing, as I, commented on before in the training slide, a host of different support materials in different formats. Uh, there'll be online asynchronous videos that people can access. There'll be online job aids that they can access. Uh, there'll also be a chat bot that Workday provides that uses machine learning uh, to continue to refine its ability to respond to questions. So you can open the chat bot and say, how do I approve uh, a worker's timesheet? How do I change my name in Workday? And it will give you instructions on how to do that. So we'll have a, a variety of support materials and resources that people can access. And they do not simply have to remember what they learned uh, in the training session. Thank goodness. <laughs> I agree. Um, I think we have time for one more question before we have to wrap up. Okay. And the last question I have for you, um, will training be in-person or virtual? Um, all of the above. Uh, <laughs> we are looking at multiply different uh, approaches to providing training. Uh, some of these courses will be instructor-led. 
Uh, they may be in person or via Zoom. Other training approaches include computer-based training. You could do it on your own, uh, sitting at a computer. Uh, we will have job aids, videos. Um, we hope to have user labs that people could come in. And if they're having an issue, they want someone to work them through a particular um, example with their work, we can help them and assist them in doing that. So we're using every stream that we can uh, to try to be sure that we are providing training in ways that are going to support people uh, and meet them where they need to go, um, whether that's doing something virtual, online in a job aid, watching a video, or yes, in person. Thank you. Well, that's what we have today. Um, before we wrap up, I just want to point out two things before we um, move on and get you guys on to your next meeting. Uh, first, as I noted, my team has been working in the background, getting all of your questions. And if we weren't able to get to your question because of time or we need to do some more research on the answer, we have your information and we'll be reaching out directly to you with um, either the follow up. We also will be taking some of these questions because they've been really good. And as Jack mentioned, we have the FAQs and we are going to be posting some of these because they are frequently asked and they do benefit the broad community. The second point I want to make is, as noted at the beginning, we have recorded this session and we will be posting it on the website once it's been remediated for accessibility. And we will be following up with an email to you as an attendee to let you know when that has posted. Those were the points. So again, thank everybody for attending. On behalf of myself, my team, Jack, and the entire Elevate program, we appreciate your engagement with us today and we look forward to seeing you at future events. Thank you. Thanks so much, everyone. Take good care.